พระสมเด็จวัดปางขนพรมพิมพ์เกตทะลุสม from the 2509 BE world famous edition very expensive series the 2509 BE series so this is the พิมพ์เกตทะลุสม which means the top knot here you can see here pierces the arch down here and so that's 2509B pim gate hello so this here will be the pat som dead bang kon pom 2509B also pim gate hello so slightly different tonality to it to show how not every amulet has exactly the same tonality and color photographs anyway always change the actual natural color and are slightly distorted it's very difficult to catch the natural color in a photograph also pim gate to look some you can see here the pagate the top knot and the spike here just piercing the arch gate it's the gate to look means to pass through or to penetrate and uh, Sum means this arch. So gate talo sum. You can see this has hu ting tingi also these droopy ears. You can see the stamp on the back. And it's important to also notice the texture of these slight um, from shrinkage and uh, from the pressing of the amulets. This texture and slight uh, from contraction. Uh, crevices. This is again a pat som dead wat bang kun pom from 2534 BE from the Udom Mongkon edition, which as you can see has pieces of broken pieces of original pat som dead wat bang kun pom from the 2540 BE opening of the group chamber in the chedi group uh, gao the large chedi stupa of wat bang kun pom to find the hidden amulets of some dead papuda janto which had been placed there at that time some 60 years i am not sure so more than half a century before or even earlier and so um this is the udon mong kon edition from 2534 BE and very beautiful for these Shin Patat or Shin Suan Pat Chamrut Bang Kun Pom old pieces of Bang Kun Pom amulet of Somli Paputa Janto Pom Mang Siya Vatrakang broken up inside it and this amulet is Prat som dead wat bang kun pom pim song chedi pim chedi also from the udom mong kon edition which we were just looking at you can see this one has seems to have a more pinkish tone to it which it will probably have a very slightly uh, pinkish tone perhaps but I would say the photograph has probably reflected purple from some wallpaper in the room or whatever was in the in the room when it was photographed so it looks a bit more purple than it probably is in real life mm. Mm. and uh, this is a Pim Song Chedi Pim Song Chedi this is a Chedi you know, the stamp of the Bang Kun Pom rubber ink stamp shows the Chedi so that's to explain what a Chedi is the stupa uh, the relic stupa these are conical pyramidic shaped things in Thai temples. So if you would say, yes, I know the Prat Som Det Pim Yai, sorry, the Prat Som Det Pim Yai, I know already uh, Pim Papatan, the famous Prat Som Det that everybody knows. What's different here? Why is this n different from the Pim Papatan? Uh, that's easy, is because the line here, if you follow the, if you follow the line here, along the side of the dace up to the peak of the spire if it's a straight line like a triangle 
then it's called the Pim Song Tia Di. Whereas the Pim Yai, the dace is a bit wider and it does it doesn't follow a straight line all the way up to the center of the of the spire of the head of the Buddha like this does. It's, it's almost like an isosceles triangle. And that's the main difference of what makes this a Pim Song Chedi from the Udon Mongkon edition, Man Bangun Pom. And this is a Prat Somdet Watrakang Ning Roy P. Pim Kai Pla Luan. This is a very rare one. It's a Prat Somdet Watrakang from the 100 years anniversary edition. Also very, very famous, expensive and very rare and hard to find anybody to convince to sell one. Uh, collected not only in Thailand, Singaporeans and Malaysians and the people in Southeast Asia really, really collect this amulet. So it's not only rare, it carries quite an expensive market price. It's affordable for anybody who can save up a little bit. It's not completely beyond purchase. It's not yet for millionaires only, so most people with a bit of saving up and a bit of self-sacrifice could afford to get one, but they are not cheap. And this is this Pim is the Pim Kai Pla Luan, which is quite rare. Mm. And very beautiful. Hundred years anniversary edition. Prasumli Wat Rakhang, not Wat Bangkun Pom, Wat Rakhang. Here we have also one more Prasumli Wat Rakhang. Ning mm. Loi Pi, 100 years anniversary. This is a Pim Yai Niom. Pim Yai. Mm. So, when, if you remember, I was just talking about the Pim Song Chedi and how I followed the line in a triangle. If you follow the line here, it completely bypasses the head of the Buddha and ends up here. It doesn't end up in the center. It doesn't follow a line from the center down the dais. It follows the line from outside. And so, and uh, also a bit um, steeper, yeah, it's more steep. And that's why it's a Pim Yai, otherwise they're very similar, the Pim Song Chedi and the Pim Yai. Mm. You can see this is a Wadrakang because you, uh, the, the border here, the square frame and the arch. It's actually quite interesting, this Pim, where the arch uh, overlaps here into the edges of the frame. That's probably the shadow of this gold frame actually causing an illusion. Most definitely, in fact. So this is a Prats Omne Kang Pim Yai Niom of the 100 years anniversary edition. Also take note of the rear face, the aspects of the rear face. And this what you see, this crap bang, Pong Putakun. This slowly, slowly rises up. It will likes to rise up in these recesses, in the recesses here, and become a very, very fine, but very hard to clean off. You can't scrape it off. Very fine talc-like powder will form, which is a sign of authenticity. And uh, how much it's there and how hard it is uh, tells you about the aging too of the, of the amulet. So that's something to also try to get under the eye loop and study. And this amulet is a Prat Somnit Wat Ha edition from 2536 BE. Also a Pim Gate Talut Som, which being a very clear Pim with Daik Langa, with the crackled um, sesame seed, or I would say broken tile effect, but they call it Daik Langa, a sesame seed pattern effect in a sesame pattern. Um, very similar somewhat to the I mean it's the Somne Geyser of what are in the Temple of the Dawn like this kind of Monsan clay also. And so this is a very clear cut pin model using this kind of clay. And so you can demonstrate this pin gate talut sum talut sum gate the top knot talut uh, piercing Sum the arch, you can see the top of the top knot here actually pierce has pierced through the top of the arch, which gives the pin its name. Notice the very thin matchstick, almost non-present uh, pasaw, the neck, 
and that the head of the Buddha is like an alms bowl, very round, like a round matchstick, you know, like an alms bowl. Mm. And I uh, notice this, uh, even in this pin, this armpit is always higher than this armpit, is always deeper and higher. Mm. And this side of the arch is always closer to the edge of the amulet than this side of the arch is to the edge of the amulet. You will almost always see that. And you will see Jiwon, a, a Chai Jiwon, a piece of his Jivara robe here connecting from his knee to his elbow and not on this side. You'll see that on every Wadrakan. So you can see here the Jiwon coming through. You can see this uh, armpit is higher. Yeah. So that's something you will see on the O'O Wadrakan. This also higher armpit. This also closer to the edge. Mm. And so there's, uh, you can see this ink stamp. So this is our heart, 2536B. And you can see how clear and still new the clay is. It hasn't begun to take on something that's a few decades older, like this begins to take on the, the, the aspects of aging. Yeah. Get a lot some piercing the arch. Okay, so there's a, a couple of nice famous clear cut pictures of famous editions of the Patsomnit Wadakang and the Patsomnit Wadbankun Pom which I thought I would show you for your enjoyment and make a few basic remarks on. And so here is Ajahn Spencer, this time always for the Buddha Magic Project and uh, for this particular recording for Amulets TV. Signing off. <laughs>